Sound good? All right, thanks. I uh, work for uh, University of Nebraska Extension in Biological Systems Engineering, and over the last few years we've been pretty much doing a, uh, quite a bit of design build on sprinkler vegetative treatment systems for our beef Oakland lot systems. And the last couple years, or, uh, we thought we'd do a little bit more um, sensors and controls and see uh, is it something that could be more useful in, in management and decision making and help the producer out. So we thought we'd uh, uh, do it on two systems. We worked through what we call Livestock Producers Environmental Systems Project funded through the Nebraska Environmental Trust and our, our job is to uh, do a design build on vegetative treatment systems on beef open lots in Nebraska that are under a thousand head and then we demonstrate them to the public and other producers and we use it as, as a manner for us to uh, 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 de help develop better techniques and construction, uh, better uh, products if we got to pump it or, or apply it. So, a little uh, overview on some sprinkler VTS and why did we do this? Uh, it's just a, a very flexible system, and it's easy to design to match uh, targeted application rates and infiltration rates of the soil. A lot of our feeding areas and our feedlots are, are down, downhill near the bottom, uh, close to surface water where we're going to lift the water up the hill. So it's, uh, if we're going to mechanically lift it anyway, uh, pressurizing it is not much a, 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 of an issue. We have uh, sandy soils in Nebraska, we've got a lot of uh, tight clay soils that uh, flood systems just don't work very well. So sprinkler uh, helps us in that. Uh, uh, land leveling costs for flood systems is uh, getting uh, more and more expensive, so that topography can be a challenge for us. Uh, sensitive water tables. Uh, <coughs> we want to pursue more uniform application as a critical design, and then also limited space. And we can do all that through our sprinkler systems. So we want to do a proof of concept to see if this is a useful management tool or a record keeping tool and uh, be able to provide uh, the producers with the feedback to help them make those decisions. If we have those sensitive water tables, is it a way for us to help monitor on that also? The record keeping is important. Washington County, uh, the first system we did is a very sophisticated one. Uh, that is uh, north of Omaha on, uh, near the Missouri River. And then the Knuckles County one would be uh, in the south central region of Nebraska, near the Kansas border. So the first one is Washington County one, uh, 580 head capacity feed yard. We did an 8.8 .8 acre uh, VTA. We used a single phase pump and then we used a uh, variable frequency drive uh, motor system on it. And this helped us when we did our HMI, our communications and data collection, we can use that uh, via, uh, VFD and it would, is that better? Uh, it would help us uh, put all this together. We now got a power source, we've got the control systems all there. So uh, it just made sense to go ahead and try it here. And we use an 80 pod K line system on a four set rotation. We had to rearrange some pans. There's a perennial stream that goes right through here. And we had to do a three basin system and link it into our pump system down in here by basin three. Here's our four sets on our sprinkler system. And then within each four set, on one, two, and then three in there is our sensors. This was this year's uh, uh, perennial crop, and uh, the drought really kicked in this year in uh, eastern Nebraska. So that pretty much is about as good as it got last year back in uh, May. These are K-line pods. Uh, we find them very uh, uh, flexible. Uh, they're uh, made out of polyethylene plastic so they don't rust, rot, or corrode for us. Uh, they're towable by a four-wheeler, the producers like them, and they fit odd-shaped fields for us. So we really enjoy using the K-lines and, and it makes my life as a designer much easier. And here they are in action on, a, on another VTA. And you can see uh, they keep the uh, uh, spray down low to the ground so that also helps with odor issues. Uh, here's our pump. Here's our control panel for uh, variable frequency drive. We use an 80 series uh, GR pump, self primer. 
this big red canister is our inline pressure filter. Uh, this is an AMIA pressure filter. And just ignore the coffee, coffee pot on top of the airbag. So. For uh, we, what we call the human machine interface with a simple message system. And this is a way so that the, we had a data collection point through a, a, a touchscreen computer on site, and then we use a wireless connection to the HQ at the household. And so when our sensors pick up uh, something that meets a uh, prescribed alarm, then it can send text messages or emails to Brian, the producer, via his. Uh, his smartphone or, or however we want to set it up. So if it's uh, uh, an emergency alarm or whether it's just a uh, 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 what the soil moistures are doing out there or rainfall and we can have that so that he can communicate without having to go out on site. This is just kind of a schematic of it. We're using soil moisture sensors, uh, float sensors in our sediment basin our HMI is through the uh, touchscreen PC, and then we wirelessly connect it to the uh, to Brian wherever he is in the world. Actually, we use these watermark barometers, uh, very common sensor. We installed them one foot and five foot, and then we just ran the wires uh, back in the, in our mainline pipeline going back to the pump. Our rhombus uh, float sensors, we get an indicator at when we're at freeboard and an indicator when we're at half full. So he can actually, uh, uh, we've got a website set up for the system and he can go on and he can see his water level as it's pumping too. And also the pressure reading on the pump. Here's a, a VFD control panel. It looks nice and simple and clean. A couple knobs, a couple buttons. But then it gets complicated when we open it up. And, and VFD is, is uh, relatively new. Uh, we're getting uh, smarter with it. This is Powercom and Iowa designed a system for us. And it allows us to, um, uh, on an electric motor, adjust the RPMs, basically. And then we can have the computer system control it, too, if we wanted to. Or we can have it uh, remotely controlled if we wanted to, also. But the VFD, I think, is, is going to be more and more popular. Uh, I know um, Lindsay Manufacturing through Botertronics is, is really doing a lot of this and, and getting it into irrigation systems too, so we're, we're going to see more and more of it. A little close up view of it. So now we've got all electronics here and that helps us connect the pump to all of our sensors. There's our touch screen right in here and then this is a pressure, flow, uh, pressure sensor from the, the pump and then we use it to calculate flow rate. The beauty of it all is that it uh, collects all the data and stores it for us, and then we can download it through USB or we can download it electronically through the wi uh, wirelessly. And then it gives Brian a nice uh, uh, hands-free record-keeping system. This indicates uh, soil moisture sensors at that shallow is the one foot, the deep is at the five foot, uh, our seventh basin uh, flow level, and then our uh, pressure reading at the pump. And this is what he could see online through his, uh, his smartphone or uh, his laptop in the household. This is part of the record keeping system and, uh, you know, date and time and, and uh, uh, pressure flow or uh, uh, the moisture, how the moisture sensors are changing. And give us in real time and then uh, also our recorded data. Here's our, uh, to change our alarms page, and so we set it, we wrote the software so we can set it, we set it so that Brian could change the alarms however he sees fit. If he doesn't want a text message every 15 minutes, he can set it so that it it's, uh, adapts to how he likes it, makes it useful to him. Our second system is in our Knuckles County facility, a 250 head uh, feedlot, a three acre VTA. We just uh, we had a simpler pump system, just a single phase uh, motor with a B series and section pump on a skid unit. We thought we'd do a little uh, less sophisticated as far as our sensors to see if it, how well it would work as far as a, a management decision. So we used the Watermark 900M with the same basic sensors 
and I put them at one, three, one foot, three foot, five foot in the VTA, but then we had a pasture next to it. The same elevation, same soil type, so it's like, well, hey, let's evaluate both and, uh, and see what changes we get. Uh, this is a feeding area and sediment basin pipeline and then our, our VTA and two set sprinkler system. Of course, there's our surface water that lure to DQ. We use dry hydrant pump suction inlet into our simple little pump system. Uh, and suction pump we used a DP5 uh, hand primer and it works very well. And this is just a smaller uh, version of our inline pressure filter. Uh, one of the drawbacks with the, uh, uh, this type of uh, uh, data collector is it only gives us uh, instant read on exact what's happening right now on the sensors. And uh, it does record them, but we'd have to download them and be able to analyze them. So it tells us what's going on now, but we can't see it, is it been, how has it been changing up to this point. Uh, back in June, now this is on the, on the 900, we had a 3.2 inch rain on June 14th, and then a one inch rain, and then a 60 hundreds. The blue is a one foot sensor. Now, the, the lower it is, the wetter it is, the taller it is, the drier it is. And uh, the VTA was planted, well, the VTA was planted two years ago. Somehow the co op. Uh, did us a big favor and sprayed it and killed it all. Uh, and uh, uh, so we had to reseed it that year. So we didn't really have much for root system. So we expected that we'd have a lot of in that one foot activity up, down, up, down, three ET. And a three foot would probably be a little bit stable. I'm not sure why the five foot was drying out so quickly at the end of June, other than it was just percolating down. But in the pasture, the pasture was an overgrazed hilltop of uh, western wheat and hairy grama grasses, so very shallow rooted uh, plants. And I expected to see this up down uh, on the one foot, and the three foot was pretty stabilized, which is about right, that the root system really wasn't at the three foot level. And then our five foot was pretty stable. So maybe we can look at this also and see how, what's the activity of our root system as it's going along. Well, we picked the wrong year to do it, basically. Uh, the sensors and the control systems work fantastically to tell us that it's dry out there. Um, so, was it very useful? Uh, in the Washington County one is a roughly a 30 inch rainfall area, and it probably would be in a normal year a very handy tool for him. It is definitely handy, and as far as record keeping, Brian really does like it for the record keeping uh, portion of it because on his nutrient management plan, is just basically it writes the report for him. Uh, it was $4,500, uh, but a lot of that was in the software development, so if we had to do it again, it would be much less than that. The hardware, especially with the variable frequency drive, is uh, very easy to tie into, and there really wasn't much to it. The Knuckles County one, probably not much as far as, as the producer going to it and, and having that assist him, assist him in his management decisions. But again, it was interesting to see how the soil moisture's changed. And if we got into it more, and hopefully, well, I wish we would've got more rain, then we would've seen how his application would have affected soil moistures too. But we didn't get, uh, again, it was just wasn't a very good year to try it, so. Uh, maybe next year, and it's not looking good for this year, so. Uh, sometime later this year, we're going to have, uh, been working on this for a while, and, and uh, I'm working on the final reviews on it. We're going to have an operator's manual for vegetative treatment systems. Uh, it's going to be uh, very similar to what we're going to get a piece of equipment type operator's manual. It's going to be very general. It can be used as far as a, a, a producer may be interested in Vegetative treatment systems for a speed lot. It would explain a lot of the components and some of the management that is necessary for these systems, and then also be able to help uh, those that have constructed new systems too. So we'll have that available, and you can always uh, contact me for uh, one access to that. Okay, questions for Jason? 
Did uh, your basin, did you decide it was 25 years form or? Yeah, 100% of the 25 years form. You got your lower set to five feet deep. This is extremely well drained soil or? Both of them are, yeah. But we wanted to see, we're, we're, uh, we're saying our roots are at three and four foot as far as the, our design for the air water and water capacity. So we just kind of want to see what's going on below that. So and our, usually as a water too much to the area, you just check and see what's down there. What's going on there, yeah. And on the second last slide, you had 900 meters, less than $1,000. Was that the feeling? Oh, the 900 in uh, data collector. Yeah, I think it was like $700 or $800 worth of sensors. The K-lines are, oh, I'm not sure what they were. $200 a pot, I think. So, yeah. Any additional questions? Let's thank Jason.